This lesson deals with a lot of properties of exponents and the way that I organize in my mind the different properties of exponents is by using this acronym MADSPAM. And MADSPAM stands for when you're multiplying exponents or values with exponents, you add the exponents. you subtract the exponents. And the last thing is that when you have parentheses, you multiply the exponents. Now one rule though is that you always keep the base. Whoops. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. So I will explain about it right now. When you are doing exponent questions, usually the directions will ask you to simplify or evaluate. It depends, so you have to pay attention to what it's asking. This one just says simplify, and we're going to use only positive exponents. So let's use some of these rules. You can see that this is going to be an example where I have to add the exponents because I have multiplication, and the rule is that when you're multiplying, you add the exponents and keep the base. So I will keep the base as 3, and 2 plus 6 equals 8. You don't have to write down 2 plus 6 equals 8 if you know where you get 8 from, but the exponent here would be 8. Now that's all they want us to do. They don't want us to evaluate, so we're just going to leave it like that. In letter B, we have division, so we're going to subtract the exponents and keep the base. So I keep negative 4, and negatives and fractions should stay in parentheses because we talked about the order of operations if you don't have parentheses back in lesson pre-6. And since this is subtraction, I'm sorry, since this is division, I will subtract the exponents. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So... I go to write negative 5, but then I go back up and it says to write using only positive exponents. So we talked in pre-6 about negative exponents and how that means to do the reciprocal. So I'm going to put the negative 4 over 1, and now I have to perform the negative exponent rule of turn the number into its reciprocal, keep the parentheses, and then make the exponent positive. And that's how you apply a negative exponent to a base. In letter C, this is what parentheses would look like for the parentheses rule. Parentheses doesn't necessarily mean multiplication. It's kind of here where you have two exponents touching parentheses. This is what the parentheses rule would look like. So I'm going to multiply the exponents and keep the base. So it stays Z, and the exponent will become 4 times negative 3, which will be negative 12. So there's my exponent, and again I have another negative exponent rule. So if I put the z over 1, the reciprocal is 1 over z, and then I have to turn the exponent positive, and that's another application of how you do a negative exponent. I'd like you to pause the video and try the next three examples on your own. Check your answers, and I want to just quickly mention example B. Remember that it, the parentheses make a difference when you're talking about a negative number. So this means that negative 4 is the base. This means that 5 is the base, and the answer is negative. So I'm going to treat the um, negatives later on. But first, I'm just going to do 5 to the 8th divided by 5 to the 4th, which is 5 to the 4th. Then a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So it's not negative 5 to the 4th. You have to apply the rules of integers. And then over here, I multiply the exponents, and I get positive 10, so I don't need to do anything with the negative exponent because it eventually went away when I did my multiplication rule. These two properties are very similar to the properties that we did in the last lesson, uh, 6.1, with square roots. Only now, instead of square roots, it's being squared, but every other concept is the same. So if I have two numbers, I can multiply them. And let's keep it simple and square them. And that's the same as breaking them apart and squaring them. 
And if you want to test that out with your calculator, feel free to do so. Algebraically, it looks the same, just with letters. The power of a quotient rule uh, says that I can divide two values and break them apart, just like I did with the product. And if you, again, want to test it out with a calculator, go ahead. Hopefully, you'll be amazed that it works. And with variables, it looks the exact same. So we're going to do a couple that are pretty simple, and then we're going to advance to some pretty complex ones. So follow along. And uh, in example two, we want to simplify. And we, again, want to make sure that our answers use only positive exponents. So in A, we're going to break it apart using that power of a product property, I think is what it was called. So I'm breaking it apart. I'm taking each of the pieces inside the parentheses and then taking it raised to that exponent outside one at a time. Now, I can actually do this math. This is doable, right? Like, I don't know what y is, so I can't square it, but I can certainly square the number negative 1.5. I don't have to leave it like this. Negative 1.5 squared is 2.25. And since that's as far as I can go, my answer is 2.25 y squared. In example B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to split it up, but now it's a quotient. And if you notice, again, I kept that negative 10 in parentheses because you need to tell your reader that it's not just 10 being raised to the third, it's the whole number negative 10 being raised to the third. And I can actually do negative 10 to the third. So a to the third over negative 1,000 is my answer. Anytime you have a negative exponent, you always want to try and get rid of it first. So before I do anything, I'm going to flip this fraction. I'm going to create the reciprocal because that's what negative exponents tell me to do. So I'll rewrite this as 3 over 2x to the fifth. So now using the quotient property that we just talked about, this is 3 to the fifth over 2x to the fifth. Well, 3 to the fifth, I can calculate. And if you can calculate something, you always should. So that's 243 over 2x to the fifth. Now, another property that we just recently learned about is the power of a product. So I can then continue to rewrite this as 243 over 2 to the fifth times x to the fifth. And again, if you can calculate something, you should. So that is 243 over 32x to the fifth. Last thing I have to do is to check to see if 243 and 32 reduce, and they actually don't, so I wrote over my answer. I'll just rewrite it. It's 243 over 32x to the fifth. All right, I'd like you to try the next A, B, and C on your own. All right, let me talk some of these through for you, some of my steps. This uh, was a negative exponent, so I put it over 1 and then did the reciprocal, exponent turned positive. Then I used my quotient idea that we learned about, and I separated them. Then I evaluated 1 to the 3rd, and then I broke apart 10y to the 3rd, and got 10 to the 3rd, y to the 3rd, which gave me 1 over 1,000 y to the 3rd. In letter B, I chose to put the negative with the 4 because typically we put the negative sign with the numerator. And when I put the negative sign with the numerator, it made the numerator negative 4. So that became a negative 4 base. Now with odd exponents, it doesn't matter. Um, but with even exponents, it does matter. Even exponents make a negative turn positive and odd exponents keep it as negative. So Although it doesn't matter in this case, even exponents, it would matter that you use the parentheses or not. And I got negative 1,024 over n to the fifth. For this next one, I split it apart, and I did 1 to the fifth, 2k squared to the fifth. Then I just took it one piece at a time. I did 1 to the fifth, and then I did 2 to the fifth, k squared to the fifth. So because this whole thing is in parentheses, every piece in the parentheses gets the 5 exponent. 
So then I evaluated that 1 to the 5th is 1, 2 to the 5th is 32, and k squared to the 5th, using my mad spam rules, is k to the 10th. All right, let's kick it up a notch. Which expression represents the volume of the cylinder? Uh, volume of a cylinder formula is V equals pi r squared height. You got to know that at this point. And now we just start plugging in things from the picture. So here we go. So I've plugged in h for height, which is the same. And then h over 2 goes in for the radius. And now order of operations tell me that I have to square the radius. But before I do that, I can automatically cross out choice A because that doesn't even have pi in it. I mean, come on, give me a break. So now let's square h over 2 squared. So that's h squared over 2 squared, which is h squared over 4. And now I just bring everything else down, bring down the pi, and bring down the h. And in order to simplify this just a little more, I'm going to put the h over 1 so that this turns into pi times h to the third, because when I'm multiplying, I add the exponents, and when there's no exponent, you put a 1, and over 4. You can put the whole thing over 4 or just put the h over 4. It doesn't matter. But I want to match the choices, which in this case matches choice d. Pause the video, read example 4, and I'll help you set it up. So they're asking us how much it emits per second. So I want the particles, or photons, per second. So that's going to be my setup. So I can take those values that they're asking for in the label. The label can kind of give away how to do it sometimes. Um, and that'll be my setup. So my photons are 1.25 times 10 to the 8th divided by 6.25 times 10 to the negative 4. Sorry, that's so sloppy. Um, so what we can do is we can break this apart and just do this piece and then we can do this piece. So, so when I divide the decimals over here, I get 0 0.2. And when I use my rule for dividing, we use subtract the exponents, I get 10 to the 12th because you get minus negative 4. And so that's almost the answer. But they want us to write it in scientific notation. Now, I hope you have already learned about scientific notation because it's not an algebra concept. You're supposed to know it before you get here, although I'm not really sure what grade they teach it to you in. But scientific notation is when the whole number right here is written between 1 and 10. So I'm not sure what you already know about scientific notation, but the way that you would turn this answer into something that would be considered scientific notation would be turning it into 2 times 10 to the 11th. Now, that's the answer, and if you don't know about scientific notation, I will spend a little bit of time in class going over it, um, but if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.